I want to introduce you all to uh, Steve, Frank, Steve, Steve Springer. Um, Steve, Steve and I know each other through the, the Lynx group. It's a Christian Bible study group at the golf course. And we've talked for quite a while over the last year and a half. And, and I've heard his story. And you know, he just does a great job at uh, what he does and talking about people, what the mental side is for you know, success. And so Steve played 14 years of professional baseball, 11 seasons in AAA, and parts of two seasons in the big leagues with while collecting two hits in each league, two, two, in a two hits in each league, one with the Met, two with the Mets, and two with the Cleveland Indians. And after his playing career, he served five years as a major league scout for the Arizona Diamondbacks, and then he became a player agent for seven years, and that was followed by stepping into coaching as the mental coach for eight years with the Toronto Blue Jays. And then you're also, I put you down as the CEO of your own company, Quality at Bats. Yep. I know you're the owner, whatever. I just, CEO is a nice title. Um, and, you know, you've, you speak frequently on the mental side of playing baseball. Um, you're going to tell us some more of that. Uh, he's taken his talks now sort of to the speaking circuit, right, where he shares the mental side of success preparation relating baseball analogies to business and sales success. He's married. He's got two kids. He lives in Huntington Beach. And, Steve, take it away. Hey, bud. It's good to be here, John. I mean, I enjoy, you know, always seeing you and talking business with you. And, you know, you have your audience, probably all your audience goes, who's Steve Springer? And, uh, that's what I get when I go speak to uh, baseball organizations. You know, I go, who's heard of me? And about two hands go up. Uh, you know, that 14 years in the minor leagues didn't make me a household name. Uh, but for what I was when I started, I'll take it. Because when I was a freshman in high school, I was 4'11", 90 pounds. I got three at-bats the whole year at Marina High School. By the time I was a senior, I was 5'8", 140 pounds. And I didn't start. I had a sophomore take my job. Uh, I coached first base. I had an older brother that went to Golden West Junior College. Uh, he was all state. I'm thinking, all right, the coach knows I'm coming there. He didn't have to call me uh, because he didn't, <laughs> you know. So I, I go out for the summer team, and I got cut, which is baffling to me how bad this coach thought I sucked. I mean, my brother's all state, and I got cut. So I got a job at Disneyland working on the canoes, trying to get stronger and thinking my baseball career was over. And about three days later, my brother came in uh, home with the uniform uh, three days later, and I was on the team. So I was 19 years old, freshman in college. Uh, I got three at-bats the whole year, and I played in the big leagues. And it's mind-blowing to say that, that I got two hits in each league because nobody thought I was going to play in high school, college, pro baseball, or get to the big leagues. And I did it. And I think that uh, this is how powerful the mind is. And I'm a mental coach for the Toronto Blue Jays for eight years. Uh, I speak all over the country on the mental side of hitting. And I feel that I've put together a, a, a presentation on the analogies of baseball and sales that works. Uh, I spoke to a 60-year company that sells valves to oil fields. I don't even know what it looked like. I knew the president of the company went to high school. He had 50 employees fly in all over the country at the Hyatt in Huntington Beach. And he said, Spring, we're having a baseball theme. Will you come tell some stories? And I said, you know what, Rob, I, I would love to give a presentation on the analogy of baseball and sales because I feel I could do it. And he's like, great. So I set up a PowerPoint. I go in there and... They had their best September in 60 years by 30% just by what his employees were thinking when they showed up to work using my analogies on baseball. And that's when I felt I had something that I could bring to the table in the business area. Uh, I had one guy come up to me afterwards. He said, buddy, I almost didn't come to this thing. I'm like, what are we doing having this baseball guy come speak to us? And, he's, and he said, I'm so glad I was here because that was phenomenal. And I gave him permission not to get the sale. And they're just like looking at me like, what? I go, you can't control me saying yes. I need to get great at giving you a presentation. Because in baseball, we, you know, we go 0 for 4. I hit three balls right on the screws right at somebody, and baseball says I suck. My batting average goes down. I think I failed, and then the wrong guy starts playing. And this is what I talked about with these guys. Uh, and I'll get into that a little bit later. I spoke to a 25 absolute all-star State Farm insurance agents. I was their closer. And you know what I did? I went to their whole meeting, sat in there for three hours so I could learn something to give a presentation on and being prepared. Sure. You know, we talk about there's no pressure if you're prepared. Like people ask me, go, you get nervous speaking in front of 4,000 uh, people? I'm like, yeah, if you ask me a chemistry question, <laughs> we're watching baseball. We're talking baseball here, right? So I spoke to a flooring company and then I spoke to a food broker company. And I just feel, you know, I think that too many people People let their mind get in the way of their ability instead of help their ability. You know, and in baseball, I have major league all-stars that call me weekly. And I've never once asked them to get a hit. I've asked them to be the best competitor on the field with an attainable goal to hit the ball hard and help your team win a thousand times. So I can't control getting a hit. 
That can't be my goal. It's nine against one in baseball, right? Well, let's get into it. And sales right here. There we go. Oh, let me see if I can't get that fixed. I think I got a perfect clack. Try it. Here we go. There we go. In sales, I mean, I always tell my guys to compete with confidence, right? I want you to play every single day like it's opening day. Because nobody in the history of baseball has ever walked up to play on opening day with no confidence ever. Why? Because there's no yesterday beating you up, right? And on game number two, it starts. I go 0 for 4 one day. I go 0 for 2, and now in my mind, I'm 0 for 6, and I'm letting yesterday play today. Well, in sales, you hear no, 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 no. And at the end of the day, you're like, you don't want to buy this anybody. And it changes your whole <laughs> vibe of what you're doing. You know, let's say that you give the greatest presentation, right? And the guy says no. That's called a line out. You did everything right, but it's human nature to make you feel like I failed because I didn't get the, the sale, right? I didn't get the hit in baseball, right? Even though I hit it as hard as I could hit it, right? And this is where the competition comes in. You know, in baseball, it's nine against one. Well, in most sales businesses, it's at least 10 against one. There's at least nine other companies that are doing the same thing that you're doing. And just because you didn't get the sale doesn't mean that you failed. And so I'm saying that if you could show up to work every single day, like it's opening day, if you could show up every single day with that mindset that I'm going to compete with confidence today, I'm going to get the right salesman selling. Because in baseball, I got confident. Nolan Arenado, who's an absolute star, Hall, star. Hall of Famer. Yeah. And I got non-confident Nolan Arenado, who sucks. He's not good. Guess what? He doesn't play anymore. Right? He's talked to me so much about getting the right guy playing every day. And it doesn't mean you get three hits every day. It means you get the right guy playing every single day, right? And with this one company that, that sold valves to oil fields, they didn't even have to uh, cold call. Like, people called them. I'm like, isn't that like fishing in a bucket? Isn't it your job not to screw it up when they call you, right? Everybody starts laughing, but that's how it is. And in, in sales, if you could get the, the, the confident salesman showing up every day, right? I'm good when I'm confident. How do I create confidence is what we need to figure out. And in baseball, there's so many mental minefields where I could do everything right and baseball says I'm not very good. Well, in sales, if I, if I show up at a meeting and I'm prepared and I give a great presentation and that guy says, no, I'm not going to let that affect my next sale. Uh, but we do it. It's human, yeah, we do. It's we human do. nature. We let negativity climb in. And this is why stats are evil. Right? Stats are evil. Stats are evil. I call batting average Satan in baseball. <laughs> I, I think it destroys more young kids than anything in the game. Now, break it down. I hit three balls right on the screws right at somebody. I beat the pitcher. The pitcher knows I beat him. Pitcher's mom knows I beat him. And my batting average goes down like this. And I think I failed. And now the wrong guy starts playing. And this is the whole thing in sales. If we could get the right salesman showing up every single day, it doesn't mean you're going to get every sale. But it means you're going to get the right salesman selling. And, you know, in baseball, everybody says, oh, you go three for ten and you're a millionaire. You're a Hall of Famer. Well, how many balls do, I, do you think I need to nut before I get – three it starts with a six you have to you have to nail six balls minimum to get three and it's the same thing in sales you can't just give three good sales uh presentations and seven bad ones and expect to get three sales you need to nail every single sales meeting you need to be prepared you need to uh you know show up there with that mindset that i'm going to compete with confidence today and i'm not letting yesterday's over 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 beat me up today yeah, we see that all the time. No, we, it's easy to let, you know, and I just, I love the, the analogy um, because I think, and, and you know, even as a business leader, right, when you're trying to get things accomplished, right, you got to give it your best. You give it your best. You show up with the opening day attitude every day and opportunity presents itself. But if the wrong guy shows up, it, one, it puts everybody else in a funk that's around you. <laughs> you know, it's like if I'm, if I'm showing up in a bad mood or in that what was me attitude, I'm in a, a sales slump, so they call it. See, a slump's a bad word. A slump means you're caring about stats in baseball. I, I, I'd like to call it a sales funk, where I'm in a little bit of a funk. How do you get out of that funk, right? What comes first? It's like I got written down here, success or confidence? Well, I believe that you need confidence to have success, because I believe that if you had success and no confidence, I believe that's luck, right? And I, I just feel that when you're confident in anything that you do, you're going to be a better player, you're going to be a better salesman, uh, hopefully you like the company that you're working for and you know you're the best and that should give you confidence, right? It's like we said, you know, pressure is when you're not prepared. And, and if I'm not prepared, now all of a sudden that guy reads it on the other end of the phone or in that meeting, it's just not good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not good. So creating confidence, you're good when you have it. How do we create it? 
by showing up every single day like it's opening day, being prepared, knowing what I'm uh, going to, you know, talk about that day. Uh, it's like I said right here, the bad never is evil. Focus on the fundamentals, not the stats. Focus on the process of the day, right? Know what that guy is walking into your office for. I think that's absolutely huge and not guessing or, or not throwing uh, every little thing that you're selling at this guy. Know what he needs, right? Know what he needs. And I, I believe that that's really going to help uh, keep you on plan, keep you on focus. Well, and you, you know, you can control the process. That's what you can control. You can't control the other person. You can't control what they say, but you can control the process. And the same thing is true in golf, the sport that I play. I, and again, I played baseball at little league when I was a kid, but same thing. You can control the process. What I do, I can't control the other parts. So focus on the process. Process and have attainable goals, right? Sometimes we have goals. I know in baseball where they're unattainable. Right. Every time I talk and I was the mental coach of the Blue Jays and, and I'll ask some kid what his goals are. And he'll say, well, I want to hit 300 with 20 home runs and 100 RBIs. I'm like, really? I, I said, now what happens when you start the season one for 20? Now we're in catch up mode. Now we're trying to get back what we'd lost. And that's a bad place to play. Right. And then the, like when I talk to these players, I'll say uh, they're 18 years old. They all want to be Mike Trout. I'll say, if I told you you could be a 25 year old big leaguer and play 10 years in the big leagues, deal or no deal. Well, their initial thought is I want to be a 21, 22 year old. That's not the question. I tell them if you can be 25, guaranteed 10, 10 and they say, I'll take it. That's 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. That's seven years you're not playing in the big leagues. That's seven years to learn how to get great at doing what we're talking about right now. Get great at showing that opening day. Get great at competing with confidence, right? Because we all think it's like right now. I have to have it right now. Well, some of you guys are just starting your jobs right now and you want the job ahead of you before you even do the job that you have. You know how you get the job ahead of you? You do great at what you're doing right now. And you do amazing at what you do right now. You're going to get a job. How do, you right. get, how do you get labeled a great player in baseball? You be good every day. Be good every day. Yeah. And that will get, be great when your career is over. So yeah, yeah, just for Ducks, what's, what's good in baseball? What would that be? What, what's an attainable goal? What would you set for somebody? It's walking up to the plate with confidence with an attainable goal to hit the ball hard. If you hit the ball hard, you win. If you get a hit, it's a bonus. Right? Okay, so if you do a great presentation, you win. Absolutely. Right? And so you have to know what a great presentation is. You have to practice it. Absolutely. And then you got to deliver it Absolutely. with the energy and the attitude and the positivity that's necessary to make it And great. what you just said is the process. And when you stay in the process, you're, you're prepared, you know what you're talking about, you know it's right, right? If deep down in your mind that you know you, what you're selling or what you're doing is not right, it's gonna be pretty hard. It's gonna be hard for you to pull it off and you shouldn't pull it off, you know? If I'm a, if I'm a boss out there, right, and, and, and hiring good people, you know, and in baseball, I, I, I was the, uh, with Alex Anthopoulos, was the general manager for the uh, Toronto Blue Jays for eight years. You could almost call this guy an idiot in front of 100 people, he didn't care because he wanted your opinion, right? And that's the greatest boss to work for, hiring good people and let them do their jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, I played for one GM, and I'm not gonna say his name. If, if, <laughs> because? You, if you wanted something from him, you better make it seem like it's his idea, right? Or, and if you say something negative, you're gonna get fired. So don't be that boss. Be that boss that surrounds yourself with good people, right? And, and, it, and, and it's like in managing or coaching, these players need to know that you care before they care what you know. Right. Yeah. It's the same thing yeah, as people a manager. don't care what you know until they know you care. But when, when I knew that my boss cared about me, I'll run through the wall for him. My boss, my manager. Right. And, and it's just people, man. I mean, you know, it's like I said, we're, we're, we live in a society where just there's so much negativity. Right. And we focus on the negativity so much. Like I might have 20 percent negativity in my in my life and you focus on it 100 percent of the time. Well, there's a negative bias. There's a negative bias in the newspaper. There's a negative bias in the media. There's a negative bias in general as a human. There, there are actually studies out there that, you know, pain or negativity is, is twice as important to move or move off of than any gain. You know, so, so we have this tendency to just focus on the negative. And there's a lot of places we can go for help. The Bible's a great place. Uh, okay. um, it does it does some really good, you know, because it tells you to walk through that and not to worry. But yeah. well, that's another thing. I, I give my I give my players permission not to be perfect. Uh huh. Right? Because you're never going to be perfect. There's one perfect Jesus, and that's it. And just be good, right? Just be good. Yeah, give that good effort, man. It, it's okay not to be perfect. But when you think you got to be perfect, you're never going to be perfect. And now you're always chasing a negative. Instead of saying, you know what, I had a great day today. I didn't have a perfect day, but I had a great day. Those are the four absolutes. Walking up to play with confidence, 
that can be answering the phone with confidence. It's showing up for work. Uh, it's, it's, it's giving your best quote, having an attainable goal, right? And, and when I'm in sales, I, I, I don't need to win every single time. Because if I feel that I won and he lost, that will probably be the last deal I do with that guy, right? If he lost. If yeah, he, he's not coming if, back. He's not coming back. Let them win a little bit. You don't have to win every sale. Because you might, you might win that sale but lose the whole thing because he felt that you get hosed a little bit. Well, I think win-win is going to be your best solution. When you win. both walk away Absolutely. with a satisfactory solution. Absolutely. It, it, but it, it's, it's part of answering the phone with confidence. It's, it's being, uh, you know, knowing your product better than anybody, you know, to where you have the confidence where you could answer that phone or have that meeting. You know, it's like I said with the, 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 the question on you get nervous. Yeah, if you ask me a chemistry question, because I don't know anything about chemistry, but you want to talk baseball with me, I'll walk in here like a softball game. You know, it's like when I when I finally got called to the big leagues, I, I was nervous because I never got a chance to play, not worried about getting sent down, not worried about getting fired. You want to be a like a triple A was like a softball game to me. I knew I could play there, uh -huh. you know, and so there's just some analogies on that and knowing that you belong and where you're at. And, and we talked a little earlier, John, about, you know, finding your passion and what you're doing. That is so important. In fact, when I was in a meeting this morning, we were talking about passion. Uh, it, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't even have a job. Like, I don't have a job. I love what I do so much, it's not a job. If you feel like you're in a job, and I know sometimes we have to do it for certain reasons, it's going to be tough. Like, my son hated school, and I was just like, I didn't know what he was going to do. I got him a job at Costco. I'm like, dude, just work here for 30 years, and, and they get your pay. And, and he hated people telling him what to do. He quit in two months. And he found his passion. He does woodworking. It's called Mom's Garage. Give him a little plug. And he puts distressed wood and reclaimed wood on walls. And it's beautiful. And people love it. And he'll come home with like 2500 bucks, And he'll go, wow, Dad, I wish I was still working at Costco making 10 bucks an hour. And I'm like, all right, buddy. <laughs> but he found his passion. I have my passion. I'm so lucky that I'm doing something that I love doing. Like I go watch a baseball game and give my opinion as a scout. I mean, CEOs would trade jobs for that. I would. I, I'm not qualified, but I would. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's part of the thing, man, is finding what you want to do. Well, part of passion, I think, is in the ability to just serve others and serve people, right? So you may be in a spot where you haven't necessarily found your ultimate passion, and you're still on a hunt or in a search, but you can still talk about how best can you serve people because serving people is kind of what it's really all about, right? When we when we make the right impression, we make the right impact on our customers. If we focus on that passion, then we have an opportunity, even in a job that we don't quite you know love yet, because not everybody finds that job right away. They right. they start at Costco or they start. But it's having a plan. It's having a vision. It's about knowing where you want to be one day and, and being the best where you're at today. Being the best where you're at today. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 you know, whether you like your job or not, I mean, it's like we talked about in the initial, when, when I try to make money, I don't make money. When I try and help people, I make money. That's the exact point. Yes. Yeah. When, you know, it's, it's about helping help people. people. Yeah. Help people. You know, I got to attack the inside part of the baseball and hitting it properly. Like in baseball, I might get the pitch I'm looking for, but if my mechanics aren't right, I'm going to ground out. I'm going to hit it hard, but it's more, I'm going to have a better chance of, of, uh, getting out and hooking a ball and hitting a hard ground ball to short instead of attacking the inside part of the ball and hitting a nice line drive. So it, it, it's talking about how do I make that into business? It's asking the right questions. It's knowing what that guy wants when he walks in the door. And, and you know, and also in business, and you know this, it's, it's letting the other person talk. Yeah, spend more time listening. You spend more time listening. There's an 80-20 rule there, right? They talk 80% uh, of the time. My brother works for Edward Jones, and he told me that a long time ago. And it's, it, it's right. I mean, you're going to find out more information when the other person talks. And, and I have that problem because you don't want to talk. I mean, everybody likes baseball. So I'm always talking about baseball, you know, instead of asking, you know, people about their lives and stuff. But I think that's a, a, a good thing. I got down to help my team win, right? When I make it about my team in baseball, see too many, too many baseball players. It's always about you. It's about me, right? How many hits did I get? No, but I mean, get great at helping your team. Right, walk and play with confidence, with an attainable goal, hit the ball hard, attack the inside part of the ball. And the most important thing is to show up to help your team win. If you could get 25 players in baseball showing up, and I don't give a crap mode about me, because it's not about you, it's about you helping this team, and you play every single day like it's opening day, I've seen magic. I spoke to the University of Texas baseball team in 2012, Augie Garrido, 
Hall of Fame coach, and he said he knew me. He didn't know me. I, I spoke to his team. Uh, I knew their coach, and he said, hey, would you, uh, can I come speak to your team? He's like, dude, Augie's not going to pay you. If we go 6-0, and oh, we don't make our conference championship. And the top eight teams made it, and they came in ninth place. He said, he's not going to pay you. I said, I'll do it for free. I walk in there. I couldn't have spoke better. I told 16 players to go stand in the corner. They would have did it. I was about ready to leave, and my buddy's like, Augie oh, wants to see you again. He said, okay, buddy, we're going to pay you for that. I want you back here next year for three days. What's your price? I said, pay me as much as you can pay me without anything coming out of your pocket. <laughs> He's like, nothing comes out of our pocket here. So I go in there, the same exact team, John, that came in ninth place in their division with freshmen and not another person was one game away from the national championship because they got every single player showing up and I don't give a crap mode about me and playing today like it's opening day. And it didn't mean they won every game, and it didn't mean they got three hits every day. It means they got the right guys playing every single day. And that's what we need to do in business. That's what we need that right guy selling every day. We need the right guy in customer service uh, doing his job with a good mindset. You know, it's like I said, I mean, we, and now we let yesterday beat us up today. And now I'm 0 for 4, and now I'm 0 for 4. Now in my mind, I'm 0 for 8. And we let it beat us up. Yeah. I, I don't know if I had anybody else that joined us. I just want to see if there's anything up, up here. Um, there's, there's four more people. Um, oh, I see four chats here. I'm sorry, I don't want to do that. I want to, I want to just see what we've got here. Um, somebody said, worked for Ed, Edward Jones for eight years. Um, somehow we got a blurry screen. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I didn't, I actually didn't move the camera. I'll try it again. Maybe I'll move the camera and get a little more clarity. It is Gary. <laughs> yeah. That's oh, my brother. That's your brother? No. Yep. All right. Um, all right, so that's, those are some chats that we had while we were here. We're going to get back to Steve's presentation here in a second. So I forgot. This is interesting to, to work it in this, in this manner. All right, so Steve, um, show me up every day. The other thing I think that's really important there is that Augie Garrido recognized how valuable it was to have somebody help their team get to that space yeah. and this guy's, sometimes it's hard to get to that space all by yourself well and sometimes it's hard to let somebody else come in you know, it is a lot of coaches a lot of management people think they got all the answers but it's mind-blowing how the best coaches in the country will have me come speak to their team i spoke to cal state fullerton i spoke to arizona i spoke to texas all three coaches absolute stars but yet i can't go speak to uh some high school in maine from some science teacher you know he's like yeah i got it buddy you know, so being being able to let somebody else help your program or, or your company is, is I think is huge. And, and, and because the, the thing about it is we're all human beings. We all have feelings, right? We're all going to feel a certain way. And this is why it's never about me getting hits. When I talk, I could talk to Major League All-Star call me today. I talk to him the same way I talk to the dad of a 10-year-old. This is not about you getting hits. It's about getting the right guy playing. It's about getting the right person showing up to work every single day. In the most negativity world that we live in, and, and now I'm supposed to show up with confidence, how do we do it? Well, it's, it's about today. <laughs> it, the yesterday's over, tomorrow's not here. It's about today, and I'm going to choose how I think. And when I get these players thinking the right way, it, man, you see, it's freedom. A.J. Pollock, star center fielder with the Dimebacks, we've had lunch three times in, in this year. He's like 12 for 15 with four bombs because it just makes him feel right. You know, it has nothing to do with his talent. It's about getting the right guy playing. It's one of my lines. If you like your abilities and your abilities aren't showing up, it's not your ability's problem. It's what you're thinking makes you feel. So it's in your head. Well, and so in many ways, I think the leader is the coach for their team. Now they can bring in people to help. And sometimes you need to do that because, you know, hey, nobody can know everything and nobody's perfect. So getting your team, the leader, if you're the owner, getting your team to show up the right way every day, I'm hiring. If I'm if I'm if I got a company, I'm hiring smarter people than me, and I'm gonna let them do their job. And I'm gonna thank them. Like I got an assistant named Mark Brooks. He could he could steal my identity. This guy knows everything about me, and and I'd be done without him. You know, I want to hire smart people. I want to hire loyal people. I want to be loyal. And when you when you do that, it's just it's a better atmosphere, right? Isn't that what we're looking for? A good atmosphere in our working culture. Culture. Yeah. Culture trumps strategy every day. No, but no doubt. Yeah. Here I got uh, watch the pitch, know the competition. Right? I will never, ever, ever dog another company to make me look good. I will never dog another sales or a, a mental coach. Mm -hmm. When somebody says, 
Steve, and my guy knows when he throws out tweets, I'm not the best. You're not that guy. Well, and you're not. I'm not in the competition. I am not the best. You call me one of the best, but don't ever call me the best because there's other people out there, right? And never, I think never is the worst word ever. Never is a bad word. Never doesn't work. It's not realistic. People, Always people, isn't realistic. People, ne- people <laughs> never thought I would play in the big leagues, but I did. You know? Right. I mean, it's just a bad word. There's always exceptions to everything. And I, I, I just believe that I will never knock another. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell them what I could do. Absolutely. To share what you do. Don't yeah. just, you know, hey, they're good. I don't know much about them. Whatever that is, here's what I do. You're going to be way better off, I guarantee it. Yeah. Right. I talk about, uh, well, we've talked about hunting hunting pitches and, and knowing what to expect and not being tricked with a question. And it, let's say you are tricked with a question one time. Let's say you don't have the answer that that guy wants on the other one. Well, how do you handle that? You, you tell him, you said, you know what, buddy? Not really sure right now. I'm going to get back with you by tomorrow with the answer. And then you go talk to your boss and then come back. And then, you know, bedside manner is everything. The worst thing you could do in sales is not return a phone call. It's horrible. Follow up. Oh, it's, it, it's the worst, man. The, uh, there's a stat out there. I don't have it with me here. But I, I think the, the av- in sales, an average, the amount of follow-up and calls is like 1.8. 1.8. So every salesperson average 1.8. But the reality is it takes about – you know, five, six, seven times before you really break through the barrier and get the great conversation that you're looking for. And I'll get people that will call me to set up a speaking engagement for baseball and, and we'll set a date tentatively and also vote. Just let me know for sure. I could take a no, right? Just don't leave me hanging. Like, oh, now I can't get a call back from the guy and I'm two weeks away. Mm-hmm. That's, that's just terrible. It's terrible right. business. Uh, I talk about breathing. Having to get a heartbeat. You're going to be your best athlete when your heartbeat's between 60 and 80. That's what I tell my baseball players. The only time I want your heartbeat over 80 on a baseball field is when you hit a triple because you're exhausted. Well, yeah, then you're going to have it, yeah. Well, it's like on the phone in sales. There's a lot of phone work. And don't be hyperventilating over the phone. <laughs> I'm thinking on the other line that you're going to have a heart attack and you're trying to sell me something. I mean, it's about – but I think that if you know what you're doing, if you're prepared, you know what he wants, there should be a calmness to you. Right, there should be a calmness to your demeanor in sales. So, oh, and you can practice <coughs> practice with somebody else on your team, or practice with a leader, uh, so that you you know all the answers, and you know you can keep your breathing in the right space. You can keep your pacing and keep listening. You, well, you, you, you don't get you good just without practice. And you said something great: talking to your employees, talking to your buddies that are doing the same, learning from who's getting all the business. Why is this guy getting it, and why is this guy not? Right. You learn like I learned a lot from my coaches. I learned more from my teammates in baseball, talking baseball. I remember I asked Dave Magadan, uh, who's the hitting coach for the Diamondbacks, this guy hitting 300 every year. I'm like, what's your what's your philosophy, bud? He said, spring, every at bat is a new season. I'm like, here, every at bat's the end of my life. And you got this thought process. <laughs> and this guy hit 300 every year. So if you could show up to work, if you could answer that phone call that every at bat, every phone call is the first phone call you're going to make when you got that job. But now you got the knowledge of, of, and the experience to what you're going to talk about. You should have freedom in that conversation. Talk about with the Blue Jays, I got them into spending about, I don't know how much money, uh, a lot of money on Best Buy gift cards. So we had opening day every Monday in our system and it was ever had the most quality at bats got a gift card. Okay. Right. So we rewarded these guys for, for lining out. Good hitters line out more, right? Good salesmen have good more meetings and don't get to sell than the bad salesmen. So there's an analogy to that. And I wish I could do it every single day, but we couldn't. But well, I'll, I'll take every Monday. Uh-huh. It's like give these kids a reset in their mind that, okay, I got a, I got a chance to get this $25 gift card. And just trying to give them some freedom to get out of your own way. You know, that's, that, that's the best word that you could use is having freedom. Having freedom in what you're doing, man. And it just makes you feel, all right, I'm good. You know, when there's no freedom, there's no peace. It's just, it's not a good place to work. Making sure I got you in the right place here. I, every time I can go up and change that thing, I mess this up. Talk about wanting the fifth at bat to my players. See, most, most players that go 0 for 4, now they're looking at that lineup and they're like, oh, no, crap, two guys get out, I get a hit again. Right, because their stats are going down. They're letting yesterday play today. Right, you know you get what I'm talking about when you're over for four, four strikeouts, and you look at that lineup and you think I need two guys down so I can be the hero, because it's about today. It's about today's game. 
I got a new game, new pitcher, new hero every single day that I play. I'm not going to let yesterday beat me up today anymore. And so that phone call at 455, when you got shut out 10 times already, and that phone rings and you want to go home, you answer like it might be the biggest grand slam of your life. Because it might be. It might be. We it's don't know. That bat. Yeah. We don't know. But if you answer the phone, hello, you know. Oh, I got to go home. Yeah. I'm out of here. What do you want, buddy? You know, you know, you answer it with the freshness. Answer it like it's the first call of your day. And if that is the biggest grand slam of your life, buddy, you're, you're going to want every phone call. And I believe that in sales, the best thing about sales, because I always felt I could sell a toothbrush to a guy with no teeth, right? Everybody is a potential client in a lot of businesses. Uh -huh. If you sell insurance, if you sell car, everybody needs them. Yeah. You know, so every single person that you meet is a potential client. You know, if you're in the financial industry, everybody's going to need a money guy. You don't know who you're going to meet. So I would, I would have that good opening day mindset every single day. Yeah. Uh, I talk about writing stuff down. See, we give ourselves too much credit to remember what we're taught. I could give you guys my whole spill in baseball, come back in two weeks, what I say and you didn't have anything to write down or listen to, you're gonna get like 10% maybe. Oh, something about your batting average, a Marius softball player, right? That's one of my jokes when I speak. I tell these guys, you're not gonna be a big leaguer, every one of you, but when you go to college, marry an athlete, then your kid might be one. So, okay, yeah. yeah, a little joke, but uh, if I'm a mentor to a, a person in my business, like, uh, like I've hired this kid and I make him good and we got a good relationship, and you don't get something on audio with him, I'm, I'm saying you're cheating that kid. You're giving him too much credit to remember what you're teaching him. You don't live with him. When I was the mental coach with the Blue Jays, uh, I, I wrote. So I go in once a month for three days. Kids love me. But in spring training, I made an individual CD for 10 minutes with their iPhone talking about them on what I felt they needed to do to play in the big leagues. And it yeah, they can listen to lives. that. Yeah. Really, they listen to it after batting practice. They're in a funk. And you know me, I'm the same guy every day. I mean, I'm like a walking CD in baseball. I mean, whether I'm talking to a major league all-star, the dad of a 10-year-old, I talk the exact same way. And it's the best thing I ever did is I made a CD talking about the mental side of hitting that's as hot now as it's ever been. Uh, ben Zobris, the MVP of the Cubs World Series, first time they ever won it. He got my CD when he was 25 years old in double A. And two years later, he was a major league all-star because he said it changed the way he thinks. He listened to it every day, he said. And I, I just love that line that we give ourselves too much credit to remember what we're taught. No, and, and there's that sharp and the saw thing, right? Where, where even though we, we were taught, let's go get it again. You know, every time you go see it, you pick up a little bit different. You're in a different place. You get a different perspective. Absolutely. Uh, and, again, and again, it goes back to wanting your people to be great. I mean, if, if you got all the knowledge, and, and I know you have all the knowledge, I'm, I'm getting something on audio with you that I could listen to in my car. I had a guy named Tommy McCraw, and this guy was did what I did with the Blue Jays. He was a roving hitting coach. Every time he was around, I was a stud. But I'd carry it for three days because I'm an idiot, right? So as dumb as I was, I was smart enough to realize when that guy was around, I was good. I brought a tape recorder up in his room. He talked to me for 20 minutes about me, and it changed my life. Because every time I was in my car, I'd had like a 20-minute ride to the field. I was listening to him, like you just said. Two years later, I'd go, oh, that's what he meant. Yeah, because it's a different perspective. You're just, you, your eyes, and you get more things experience. open your eyes. You have yeah. more experience. Yeah. You know, I talk about writing it down. I knew I had to do four things every single day to be successful. I knew I had to breathe. I knew I'd have a tall backside. I knew I'd attack the inside part of the ball. And I was a lunger, so I, I knew I had to start with a stiff front leg. I got 500 bats a year, five at bats a day. There's no way I'm going to remember that every single day. So I wrote those four things down on a piece of white tape. I stuck it in my helmet. Every time I put my helmet on, it was right there. So in business, if you know you have to do something to be successful, have a little cheat sheet right there, right? Have it in your car if you're going to go to a meeting. And so you don't forget it. I, I love I cheat sheets. I know what I'm doing. So I'm easy good. to forget. Life is so busy. It's so easy to get distracted and forget stuff. Uh, and here's what happens if I didn't have it written down. Two weeks will go by, and I'm like, oh man, attack the inside bar of the ball because you forgot. And now you just threw away about 30 at bats. And it's the same thing. So you threw away 30 phone calls because you weren't thinking on what made you successful in the first place. Because, like you said, we we get caught up in life. I think I might put that list on the inside of my golf hat. There you go. I do. Yeah. I do yeah. have it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> See, I just learned something. I talk about visualizing the players. See yourself having success, right? So we've talked about it today. You, there's so much negativity in this world. When, see, the mind doesn't know the body's not doing it. 
If I took half a team in baseball and I said, go take batting practice for an hour, and I took half a team and I said, go visualize yourself hitting missiles for 10 minutes off tonight's starting pitcher, and you ask me who I think is going to have the better game, I'm going to take the guys that never took a bad swing with their mind. It's like I said, the mind doesn't know the body's not doing it. See yourself having success. And I, I think that's powerful. Two strikes. What happens when you're having a bad day? It's almost obvious now. You go back to the process. You go back to this phone call's opening day. I'm not letting yesterday beat me up. I'm not letting the last five phone calls beat me up. Because there, there's data that we're going to have success because we have a company. It's, it's like... It's like sometimes we're not ready for the success to happen because we're so worried about what's already happened negatively. So I, I believe Augie Garrido said it is the most brilliant thing he's ever heard in baseball, play every day like it's opening day, because we all know what that feels like. There's freedom. There's, yeah. There's no yesterday. No yesterday. Nothing, that, nothing dragging us down. And in closing, there it is, man. It's about the process. It's about – you know, star athletes focus on fundamentals, about being prepared. Practice comes from fundamentals, that, which creates confidence, right? Knowing my if, – if you don't know the product that you're selling or the business that you're in to where, you, like, you forgot more than what mo other people know, then you're probably going to be a little bit nervous still. It's about being prepared. It's about knowing what you're selling and having confidence in what you're going to sell, and it'll be good. Well, there's a practice component there. If you're a new employee and you don't know, I mean, you, you've got to give – you got to go through the process and it's okay. Uh, it's a learning. It's about getting better, getting a little better. You know, and it's not like a massive quantum jump from day to day. It's about getting better every little day. And eventually you get there. That's a promise. Well, I, I believe that one line that we talked about is giving yourself permission not to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Just be good, man. Give good effort, effort. I, I, I could teach, you know, I, it's about effort in baseball. It's about getting the right effort. It's about, you know, get coming, showing up with the right attitude every single day. It's like what I talked about in baseball. If, if you're an idiot and you're not hitting, you're going to have a real job real soon, right? I mean, it's not going to be a baseball wants, job. Nobody wants to be around you, man. Be a good person. Like, like help people. People like people, you know, that, that help people. And I, I felt I could have told 100 Blue Jay players to go stand in the corner and they would have did it because they knew every word out of my mouth was trying to help them be a big leaguer and a good person. Simple as that. We get so caught up into what are, what are they thinking? No, no, it's all about me. And I tell them it's not about you. It's about you helping this team today and getting that guy showing up every single day. And it's, there's just freedom in that thinking. Yeah, yeah. That is awesome. Uh, you want to wrap here? And I'm going to turn it up open to questions for the group. No, I, I'm glad you had me here, buddy. I, I, I want to speak. Um, you know, I, I think like if I know what I'm talking about, if I know the company, if I, I believe that I could inspire and I could uh, to help companies, uh, you know, grow their business. Well, let me do that. Let me just, uh, I'm going to open the mics, figure out how to do that. And then I will open up the mics and let everybody talk. Uh, okay. So we got, we got a little dueling mics there. So check your speakers. Um, so I just I just open it up the floor to Steve for for Q and A. Um, his call to action for everybody here, in case you guys didn't figure it out, is to show up every day. Every day. Every day. Yeah. I hope you guys like the analogy because it, I, I believe it's right, and and not only in baseball but in life, uh, mm -hmm. just the human element of always focusing on the negative. Man, we got to get out of that mindset. We got to get out of that mindset. mindset. So any questions there for Steve? Steve, did you ever work on the pitching side of it rather than the hitting side? Yeah, I made a pitching CD also. Uh, you know, and my opening line was, why do you think I could talk about pitching? Well, I faced them 6,000 times. I played behind them in 1,600 games. And I've been scouting them my whole life, and I know what it looks like. And, and it's about, you know, pitching with confidence one pitch at a time. And get rid of the ERA. Get rid of the – stats are evil. Stats are feel and think. And, and in most, most businesses, there's more failure than, than success. So uh, I made a parent CD uh, for the whack job mom and dad. <laughs> the whack job mom and dad. Okay. Uh, oh, parents. That's how I open up my CD. What's up, whack job? I mean, parents, excuse me. Because <laughs> we all want our, our kid to be the next Mike Trout. You know, so did I. But um, Right. Yeah, I know. Our society, we live through our kids. But um, let me ask you another question. 
if you say they statistics are evil, what's your uh, advice to think about the whole trend outing with what they call the shift and all that? I'm sorry. Yeah. The shift. The shift. So now they, you know, the infield shift. No, the, infield. it's not even baseball anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah, they should call it a new game. I mean, they should call it Rovers or something, you know, where you could just do that. Uh, the analytics people have taken over the game. Uh, yeah. I, think, I think there's a place for it. I don't, I don't believe it's in the one hole personally. I, I believe it's, it's always about the mentality. I mean, this is why first rounders can't get out of a ball and guys not drafted spend 10 years in the big league. You know, you might, you might have two people in your, in your company and one guy has all the tools in the world and the other guy has all the determination and the people skills. I'll take that guy all day long. I'll take a great competitor over a guy that has a great swing and a below average competitor, you know, because this is all about competing, but it's about competing with confidence in anything we do. Like well, I, I talk about an attitude. In fact, at this course, we started the very at every workshop I do. We talk about what's the right attitude. What what's what are the behaviors? The right attitude. Uh, how do you put your head in the right place? And I have my style, but you've got yours, and I, I love yours. That's how I ask you to come down here and talk to everybody. Because if it's not in the right place, we all know people that you know, are really really smart and can't get out of their own way. And we all know people that frankly just aren't that brilliant and they kill it. And that's that guy that's got the right attitude. That's the guy that's got the right confidence. That's the guy that's going out there every day. I was playing golf with a guy, and he said, you know, stupid people are happy. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe, I don't know about that. maybe that's the way it is, but um, I try to <laughs> – that's funny. Well, they don't think as much. You know, they don't think about anything. So, so guys, your call to action today is to develop your routine. Develop your routine – so that you could show up every day. What is your routine to show up every day like it's opening day, right? Every day you're fired up, you're ready to get out, get after it. And you know, whether you're in the sales space or you're in the business space or you're in the service space, you know, what's your routine to get you fired up and ready to go compete with confidence and do the right things, right? That, now, Steve could tell you all about the baseball things you have to do. He's not necessarily gonna know your business well enough to figure out what your thing is, but your thing is, what do I have to do? What's that routine? Because going back to the process is the answer. What's the process that you're going to go through? And mine starts with an early morning phone call and a cup of coffee. And, you know, I just, that's kind of rolls me right into, into my day. I spend a little time with the Lord and then I'm, I'm good to go. Uh, I, I think if you could take away just one thing from what we just talked about is we got to stop letting yesterday beat us up today. Um, you know, there, I had a note here to talk to you about uh, routine. If you talked about energy, nutrition, go through that. What, what's your routine or what's the routine? Well, you got to be careful. You don't want a routine to turn into a superstition. Okay. You know, because there's a difference. And, and I believe that a good routine uh, for a baseball player is, is being, you know, mentally ready, physically ready, and for me, spiritually ready. You know, it's like three tanks. And, and if one of them's low and one of them's high and, and you got this unbalance, uh, you know, nowadays in baseball, they got a nutritionist, they got sports psychologists, they got uh, trainers. Not every company is going to have all that. So we got to have the, the discipline to do it on our own and, and, and knowing a routine that's right, that works. Uh, it's like I talked about, you know, you might have other employees in your business that are just getting it done. Why, why do they get it done? Right. Copy them. It's, it's like when I golf, like when I golf with better players, I play better because I watch their swing and I'm like, that doesn't look like my swing. So now I try to act like their swing with their mechanics and it seems like I play better. So it's, it's okay to learn from other people, you know, and, and be that part of your team. Try and learn something every day, you know, and, and when, we, when we just get the right person showing up, I don't know what to about it. Sure, sure. So Steve publishes a, a newsletter on a, how often do you publish that newsletter? It goes out every couple days a week. Couple days a week? Yeah. Um, how do people join your mailing list? Uh, go to qualityatbats.com, all one word, and, and everything's on there. Yeah, the uh, pop up shows I up. Want, I have an online academy, you get the newsletter for free. If you know anybody that's playing baseball, tell them to go get the CD, DVD, Parents C Pitch. I wrote a book called Springtime. Uh, if anybody knows a movie producer out there, keep me in mind because uh, there's going to be a movie one day. Yeah. And, I, and I, I believe it's like the baseball version of Rudy. I, you you know, know, I was just thinking that. To inspire millions of kids yeah. and 
And, you know, you don't start in high school, you get cut in college, you played in the big leagues as brief as it was, and now I got Major League All-Stars calling me, you're going to tell me you can't do what you want to do in life? Right. You know, it, right. God's good, he's real, he loves us. Uh, you know, for a long time I had God as a cop behind a billboard with the radar gun waiting to drop me. And that's not who he is. He's love, he's grace, he's mercy, and he's even more grace. Yeah, yeah. So join his mailing list. Um, I'll have a copy of this recording available for the folks that are on the call and for the uh, Business Success Blueprint thing. We're going to put it up and allow you to uh, download a copy, and you can send it to your friends. Um, anybody, you know, Steve, obviously, he loves doing speaking engagements because, you know, he can, he can change lives. And uh, gosh, Steve, I'm really glad you decided to join us today. Uh, thank you so much, man. I, I love it.